and this is my week three assignment for FTT 221 Sights, Optics, and Accuracy. Let's go ahead and get right into the video. All right, so here we are at the workstation. I have a handrail with a pick rail on top and a vise. This is actually in lieu of this. This is the Weaver uh, rail that came with the, I guess, launch box or whatever you want to call it. According to the directions or uh, for the lab, you don't have to use that if you have something like this. So we're just going to go with this. And then for whatever reason, I have two sets of um, rings. So we have these vortex ones and we have these ones that came with the actual optic itself. So we're going to go ahead and use these. All right. So here we are here. Well, I like to have it about there and then probably about like that. So as you can see, that looks proper, at least to me. And so what I'll do now is I will go ahead and put move these rings forward in the um, spaces as I can. And then I will torque this down. Okay. So I got these torqued down and as you can see, there's this kind of like whatever this is inside. So we're just going to put this off to the side because those are not going to help at all with lapping this, uh, these rings. You can see the machining marks there. And of course you can see some of the leftover uh, tape there. So that's definitely a good testament to why you want to lap your rings. The first thing we're going to do now that we have the rings mounted on here, we're going to go ahead and put in the alignment pins. So these are the alignment pins. And this is really to check how far off you actually are on your alignment with your scope rings. All right. So let's go ahead and get the alignment pins installed into these. So the alignment pins are finally installed and torqued down. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how far off it actually is. So as you can see here, they are off just a bit, but not terribly, not terribly at all. And if I tilt this a little bit forward, you can kind of see, you can kind of see a little bit right here that this one is a little out of spec with this one. So I don't think we're going to have to do a whole lot of lapping on this. So that's definitely encouraging. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and remove these rings and then we're going to go ahead and, well, I guess get to lapping. Okay, so this is the lapping bar here. So we'll go ahead and get this set up to prepare for lapping. All right, there we go, cool. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and prepare our lapping compound. As you can see, we have the 220 grit here, and we're gonna apply that on the inside of both the bottom and the top of these rings. Gonna go ahead and put the lapping bar inside and torque it down, and then we're gonna get to lapping. So this is what the lapping compound looks like. And we'll go ahead and put this inside here like that. And we go like that. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and put this bar inside here like that. Then we'll go ahead and take our screws and insert them in. I'm gonna go ahead and hand tighten all of these. Okay, so now that we have the lapping compound and the rings kind of snug down on this, let's go ahead and get to lapping. So all we're gonna do is gonna work it back and forth just like that until the level of resistance is significantly less than before and it can rotate freely. Okay. And so I would say that that's pretty good. Yeah. Look at that. It's moving back and forth just fine. And now we're going to go ahead and remove everything and see what the finish is on the inside. As you can see here, there's a difference between when we first started and now. So this should be much better in alignment, if not perfect alignment. So that's what it looks like with all the lapping compound on it. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove all of that. And here's the other one. And here's the lapping bar. As you can see, there's a bunch of compound on it. We'll just go ahead and get that cleaned up so we can put it away. And one thing to note here too, is that your lapping bar is also going to eventually like you see how worn that is already from that 220. So there you go. Now let's go ahead and clean out the rings that are on, on the rifle. Halves of the ring scopes are now cleaned. So let's go ahead and put the alignment pins back in, check our alignment. Then we go, go ahead and put on our scope. Okay. So there's the alignment pins. 
And as you can see, that is much, that's pretty much spot on. Okay, so now that we got that taken care of, let's go ahead and take out these lime pins and then let's go ahead and mount our scope. All right, so here's our scope right here. We've went ahead and taken off the rings. Uh, before we mounted the bottom rings to the rail, we made sure that the spacing was correct for this particular scope. So let's go ahead and lay it inside and boom, as you can see, there we are. And so, I, I like just because of the way this sits right now, I'm a little bit OCD in the sense that I, I want this to be in the middle of the tube more so than like on this side. So as you can see, you only have that much space on this side for the tube. And then on the other side, you have a lot more. Um, but the things to remember is when you're mounting this on an actual rifle, um, you want to make sure that the eye relief is set properly and that you have enough clearance underneath the rail, especially if there was a bigger uh, objective lens. Uh, this one's a pretty small one. I think it's like a 24 or 28. Um, no, it's probably a 24. Um, and as you can see, that's plenty of clearance here. And additionally, on top of that, because of the type of vise that I'm using, um, plenty of clearance. So let's go ahead and get this thing uh, leveled and mounted, and we'll call that good. So I have this loosely, or I guess you could call it snugly mounted in the scope rings. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can make sure that this thing's leveled. Um, there's kits out there that you can shine a light through to make sure that it's level to like the crosshairs are actually level to the rifle itself. Um, there's pieces where you put it on the pick rail and you use the bottom of the scope to like make sure that it's perfectly level. Um, there's clip-on levels and then there's always like, you know, I mean, not the best way, but good old eyeball. For the sake of this video, we're gonna actually use a leveling kit. So here we have a leveling kit. So this is going to go on the top of the scope like this. And then this would actually go on the uh, the front of the, the rifle. Now, because we're using a handrail, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to actually attach it to the handrail here. So what I'm gonna do, and this won't actually expand big enough for it to, uh, to grab onto and properly level it. So we're gonna go ahead and rest it on top of the handrail like this. This is not actually 100% level. So this, level, this method is actually not the greatest because we're assuming that this top of the pick rail is 100% level. But for the sake of this video, we're just gonna assume that that's correct. And as you can see, this is actually off, uh, not level itself. So we're gonna go ahead and scoot this and get it centered in the bubble level here. And now we are at level here and we are level here. So let's go ahead and take these off and we can go ahead and torque these scope rings down and we should be good to go. Now I wanna keep that level on there to make sure that as I'm tightening, that doesn't actually become unlevel. Okay, so this is the finished product. I don't know if you guys can actually see in there or not. Nope, the camera does not have great eye relief. Oh, it actually kind of does. Nice, okay. So as you can see, this is the finished product. The rings were lapped, scope is mounted and leveled. And granted, now this is just on a handrail, but you know what? This was actually a pretty fun lab and it really helped out a lot in understanding more of the precision element of um, scopes. Um, now, as I mentioned in some of my uh, discussion posts, there are companies out there now that are making rings that you don't need to lap at all because machining has gotten so good and Area 419 is one of those companies. And um, let me just say that um, there's a huge difference between these rings and the Area 419 rings, but also a price point too. So this was definitely a good skill to have and to learn. And uh, anyway, well, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.